Hello, so um, this is a spontaneous video, as are most of my videos, to be honest. Which means really that I just speak as, as the subject matter comes to my mind. Um, and sometimes I think that's the best way in which to make videos, the most spontaneous and honest way. It's not the planning isn't honest, but I think with that there's a little bit too much control. With this, it's more direct, just, you know, what I think at the time. What I want to talk about is the subject of sensitivities. Now, if you've followed my channel for a while, you'll have maybe seen my videos on my contention with people being too sensitive. And this is our running theme of this millennial generation, the idea that... Um, to put it bluntly, we're a generation of snowflakes, of crybabies, of people who look for reasons to be offended. And I definitely think there's a degree of truth in that. Although you can't talk about every single person in the generation, not everyone is of that mindset. But definitely there is that, um, I think there's a consensus out there. You could argue it's more within right-wing circles. I don't know if that's necessarily the case. I'm centre left on many areas and I think people can be too easily offended. So I'm not sure if it's quite as simple as, I mean, incidentally, I do believe there's such a thing as right wing political correctness, but anyway, that's for another video. Um, so yeah, uh, I, I don't change anything I've said. I don't, I don't change my view that there are people who seem to look for reasons to be offended. And there are people that you know, you feel like you have to, you're walking on eggshells around them, that every little nuance are going to um, have a tantrum or they're going to get upset or they're going to take things personally. And there are people out there who will read into everything as being racist or sexist or homophobic, or they'll find some other sort of form of bigotry connected with it. Um, incidentally, and this is really not here or there, but I was reading an article on Nigel Farage earlier in Newsweek magazine from a few weeks ago, got it on eBay, and it said, uh, Mr. Brexit, that was the cover. And I was in an inter interview with Farage, and I was asking some blunt questions, are you a racist, are you a bigot? And he said, he, uh, they said, you've been accused of Islamophobia. And he said, thank goodness, um, I would be disappointed if that one wasn't on the list. And I couldn't help have a little laugh about that because I figured I know what he was getting on to. That is namely that Islamophobia is far often used to um, kind of silence legitimate criticism about violent aspects of Islam. Um, I don't like it as a term, uh, but again, that might be for another video. Anyway, it's all it's all relevant to the subject matter here, which is sensitivities. OK, so I do believe that there is definitely an aspect of my generation that is way too sensitive. I think there are people who are far too politically correct. They go out of the way to be offended or to be offended on behalf of others. And um, there's too many people who are, you know, you get the impression you have to walk around, you're walking carefully around them. Um, and there's too many people, frankly, who will use their race or their gender as an excuse. That is to say, whenever something doesn't go their way, they'll say, oh, it's because of the colour of my skin. It's because I'm a woman because I'm a man, you know, it's, um, you get that. So that's all, you know, I, I absolutely maintain that. I think that's a big problem. But I do think there are times sensitivity is required. And that's why I'm making this video to balance it out a little bit. I do think there are times when sensitivity is not a bad thing. It's not a regressive thing. And it is absolutely, you know, it's absolutely right to show a degree of sensitivity. Now, there's obviously common sense situations. If you go to someone's funeral, or let's say you're invited to a funeral, you're not going to sort of stand up in the middle of the funeral oration and say, oh, by the way, that guy owes me 10 pounds or $10. You know, that would clearly be insensitive to the relatives. Or you're not going to get up and maybe um, rant about how you didn't like the person, you know, when their relatives are, are present. Um, you're also not going to, you know, bluntly remind someone about something 
in a certain way. If, if for example, if someone has dealt with a trauma situation very recently, let's say they've just lost their, um, I'll give an example. Let's say you know that someone has just lost a relative in a car accident, in a road accident. You're not going to go up to them and say, oh, by the way, have you seen um, Fast and Furious 7? Knowing the situation, that would be insensitive, right? So there are times when a certain degree of decorum, and if that means a little bit of self-censorship, then that's not necessarily a bad thing, if it means sparing people's feelings. You know, I, I don't like the idea of being too sensitive, but by the same token, we should also be careful not to get too desensitized. It can go to the other extreme as well. And that's not a good thing, because then people end up just being dicks, and they end up just treating people in a cruel way and that's that's the other extreme and it's a point that shouldn't be overlooked um i i don't think that um for example mocking someone or bullying someone is a case of that person you know being too sensitive i think bullying is bullying period and i have a problem with it um it's different if someone's going out of the way to look for a reason to be offended when someone's just made a slip of the tongue or they they said something without any malicious intent. But when you get someone or especially a group of people who are, you know, specifically targeting someone and they're trying to run that person down, they're trying to, you know, just be as nasty as possible. That's not a case of the person being too sensitive. I defy anybody, no matter how tough or secure or self-assured they think they are, not let that get to them at some point. Um, we're all human beings and everyone has a breaking point. Some more so than others, that's true. You know, some people have a higher threshold, but you push anyone hard enough, I think anyone has a breaking point. So treating other people with respect um, and you know, just not being an ass, not being cruel is just part of being a decent human being. That's not being too sensitive. That's not, um, you know, being politically correct or anything like that. That is just being a decent human being. Now, on the subject of, um, let's say, identity politics and political correctness, again, areas I've been very scathing of. That doesn't mean I think you should go up to people and just call them the opposite of what they want. So say, for example, um, you have someone who has described their heritage in a certain way. I respect that. You know, um, I wouldn't stubbornly call them something else just because I disagree with their self-identification. This also comes into the transgender issue. I personally don't believe that you can biologically change your gender. I think that's um, pseudoscience. I don't think it could be done. You know, you can have the surgery, you can have hormone treatment and all of that, but biologically, the human body was not designed to be changed. You know, we're not like uh, seahorses. But um, if someone, you know, if a, if a grown adult, and I do believe it should be made at adult level, but if an adult decides to have a gender change, that's entirely their business. And that's a decision I, I won't pretend I understand it, but I respect it. And I respect that they went through a lot of um, personal struggles to get to that point. And I wish them all the best. Um, I really do, because they're not hurting anyone else. Now, if they... If I meet a trans man, um, that is someone who was, uh, let's say, born born female, but um, they had the operation to become male or to identify as male, I would respect that. I would say he, likewise, she with a trans woman. Jordan Peterson has opened up a lot of debate about pronouns. Um, the way I see it is... On a personal level, in terms of personal etiquette, I'm not going to call someone something that makes them uncom uncomfortable. What would be the point of that? It wouldn't achieve anything. Um, you know, I might think their self-definition is inaccurate, but that's really not my concern. It's a question of, well, why, why not call them their preferred pronoun if calling them something else, you know, makes them upset? It's... It's just a qu basic question of respect. So that's okay. What I do disagree with is putting legislation behind it, like threatening to prosecute people if they use the wrong pronouns and so on. I think that's dead wrong. But 
it, it comes down to a question, excuse me, a basic question of respect and politeness. So from that point of view, I describe, I would refer to people primarily by their name, but where pronouns are used by the preferred pronoun. And I don't think it's disingenuous. I, I just think it's a question of politeness. Um, but caveat with that is I don't think people should be prosecuted for um, not using pronouns. I think that's too extreme. Um, and that's where Jordan Peterson has made some very good points uh, in regarding how there are, frankly, aspects of the transgender lobby who are pushing for legislation. And that's where very important questions of civic liberty come into this. Anyway, um, my point is that there are people out there who, another issue I take is with people who have a particular sense of humour and someone else doesn't find them funny and then they're like, oh, have a sense of humour. The problem with that is that, you know, there's different types of humour. You can't, you cannot impose your sense of humour on other people and demand that they find it funny. Now, I can understand if you like a particular comedian and people are calling for, you know, the show or his stand up, her stand up to be banned. Yeah, that's again getting into the issue of freedom of expression. It's getting into the issue of, you know, um, imposing legislation on that. However, people do have a right to say they dislike that type of humour. They have a right to say they don't like that comedian. I'll give a personal example here. I can't stand Frankie Boyle. I think he's about as funny as a graveyard. Uh, I think he's a borderline bully. I don't like him. I don't respect him. Anyone who mocks dead children is a piece of shit, in my opinion. Excuse me, not dead children, disabled children, which he has done. I have no respect for Frankie Boyle. I can't stand the man, and I think he's an odious toad. So when we're talking about free speech, if you're going to say it's okay for a comedian to stand up and come out with the most cruel and um, abrasive sort of humour around, and oh, no one can complain because it's free speech, then by the same token, you have to respect the fact that critics have a right to call him names and call him uh, an odious so-and-so, which I believe he is. Um, now, it's different if I was calling, oh, his show should be banned. But the way I see it is Frankie Boyle is a bully. <clears throat> He targets people who can't defend themselves. That shouldn't be glorified. So I'm not calling for his shows to be banned. It wouldn't happen anyway. But what I am saying is that his supporters need to drop the attitude or have a sense of humour because not everyone has the same sense of humour. And some of us happen to find mocking disabled children, for example, to be unfunny. Another one is Roy Chubby Brown, who made a joke about the Bradford City disaster and when 56 people died. Uh, it was a tasteless joke. Don't invite me to the barbecue. You know, that sort of humour. Uh, another one, yeah, another one, uh, because it's all relevant to the subject at hand. Um, Charlie Hebdo. Now, after the terrorist attack, Charlie Hebdo got a lot of sympathy. And I was among those who were sympathising. It was, you know, there's absolutely no moral equivalent between being offended and a bloody terrorist outrage. But I lost sympathy for Charlie Hebdo when they just went out of their way to be like schoolyard bullies. I mean, after the Russian jet was shot down over Egypt, the worst aviation disaster in Russian history, they actually had a cartoon depicting the pilot of that disaster groping one of the stewardesses. Now, that was disgusting. There was zero evidence that anything like that had happened, and it was just a cheap shot at victims of an awful, awful situation. And... You know, there, there's a semi-chance that relatives might have seen that. How would they have felt? So I do think that it's a bit of a card attitude that kind of hide behind humour and hide behind satire and say, oh, well, anything goes. If, if you're going to behave like a bully, you should be called out. I'm not calling for it to be banned, but I, I do take issue with the idea that because some people find it funny, then everyone should. You know, uh, the whole point of freedom of expression is it is for everybody. That means critics have the freedom of expression to criticise. That's what, you know, that's where pe what people need to understand when they defend comedians. Um, comedians 
or satirists have the right to their expression, but critics have the right to criticise them and call it trash and call it cruel and call it bullying. And I certainly will if I feel that's the case. So also, I would absolutely not blame uh, relatives of people, you know, who are targeted in that way for feeling infuriated. And, you know, I, I wouldn't put it this way. If I... If I was a public figure and a family, and I had a family, and uh, they weren't pub in the public eye, and they were targeted, I would feel pretty angry about that, and I would make that be known, and I wouldn't give a damn how it looked. So, yeah, I might be going off a bit on a tangent here, but this all relates to the issue of freedom of expression, and the point I would make is uh, having too much sensitivity is a bad thing because it means you're you're a snowflake. You're you're too easily offended. You've, you know, your skin is too thin, and you're looking for reasons to be offended, etc. But by the same token, if you never ever feel that anything is sacred, if you feel that anything can be mocked, anything can be ridiculed, anything can be used as toilet humor, um, then I would suggest you have no values. And you have no sense of human decency. So I guess what I'm driving at is there's two extremes. There's too much sensitivity, but there's also too much a lack of sensitivity, which leads directly to being desensitized and basically ending up as a pretty unpleasant person. If you feel that nothing is sacred, then what are your values? You know, if you think that everything is it's fair game. Everything could be bought. What's your values? And I'll leave it there. Thanks for watching.